Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial from scarmotion.com. Today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to animate a little bouncing ball. Now this is one of the very first exercises that animators are taught and for good reason because it teaches us so many things. It teaches us about timing, stretch and squash, ease-ins and ease-outs or slow-ins and slow-outs. Um, as well as the very fundamentals for how to save keyframes and manipulate keyframes in 3D software. Um, and when I first started off doing 2D animation, you still had to do the bouncing ball exercise. So I'm just going to get right in there and I'll show you um, how we produce this little uh, bouncing ball. It's very simple. Okay, so I'm just going to load in uh, a new ball. I'll just first of all I'll delete this little guy and I'm going to go back to my very first frame at frame 1 and in the library here you can see that I'm already under primitives I'm just going to double click and bring in a little bouncing ball. Uh, he's not bouncing yet is he? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make him bounce. Okay so he's a little small. I'm just going to scale him up Let's say around about that. Yeah, make him say 200. I could just type in that value right in there. And let's give him a color. I'm just going to go into the materials here. And then with this little eyedropper, I select my object that I want to change the color of. And then I click on the diffuse color. And then I'm just going to assign this one. Let's just make him green. That looks good. And then I'm going to go back into the pose tab. Okay, um, you have to be in the pose uh, tab for animating. Here you can see that I've got my um, animation palette which is loaded up. I also have my graph editor and you can find all of these um, menus under window um, animation palette. You can select either through there um, or you can bring up the animation palette by coming down and clicking on this little key and that will bring that up. Um, the graph editor, you definitely need that as well as your library and your parameters tab and the hierarchy you can have that in it you can load that in if if, if you like um, okay so the first thing I'm going to do is this uh, exercise is only going to be 18 frames in length so down here I've already um, done this just type in 18 okay so it's one of 18 the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to select the ball. By selecting the ball you'll see that now I have this little um, uh, circle um, around the ball. Then come over here into the parameters tab and we're just going to translate the ball up in Y. Now make sure that you're on frame 1 when you're doing this um, and just lift it a little bit off the ground. I'm lifting it say 5 units. That's completely fine. You can even type in 5 if you like. Okay, um, and then the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go forward and go to frame, let's say that we go to frame 9. Let's take him back down and drop him on the ground so that he's just touching the ground there. Okay, now over here you'll see that um, something's happening in my uh, graph editor. Um, I need to expand this window. You can see there that it was, uh, it was very hard for me to see what was happening, so I'm just going to um, open this window up there and this is my Y trans. So over time the ball has actually gone from frame 1 down to down onto the ground at frame 9. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of squash and stretch. Um, come up into the uh, parameters tab here and just give a, a little bit of um, Y scale on it and then also I'm going to just shrink him sideways just a little bit. Okay, that's perfect. And so that's all he's doing. Then go forward one frame to frame 10. Keep him on the ground, but this time squash him down, make him a little bit wider, and we're going to squash him flat on the ground. Okay. So what this is, this is actually helping inform us of what this ball is made of. It's adding a little bit of stretch and squash, or squash and stretch. Now the problem with Poser is that you can see here um, that we have this overshoot happening and that's why this animation here is making the ball disappear, is making it go very very um, squashed. We can fix that very easily. Go back to the first frame and with the Y scale and the X scale 
make sure that your um, cursor that your um, frame count is, is at frame 1 just come down here and hit linear okay and then do the same thing for X scale okay and then when we scroll forward now we don't have that problem okay in most other 3d applications they have tangent handles on each of these knots in poser they don't which means that you actually have to sculpt the um, the ease ins and the ease outs they do have um, splinal capability they have linear and they also have um, stepped and constant um, but there is no way for us to um, use tangent handles so the next one that we're going to do is we're going to go forward to frame 11 and the next thing that we're going to do is come over here and have a look at the um, in the dope sheet you'll see that we've got this ball one and what we've done so far is we've saved one key on frame one one key at frame nine and one key at frame ten go back to frame nine and select it in the dope sheet and then copy it by hitting control C and then go forward to frame 11 okay and then hit paste control V and then if you click on that uh, that cell in the dope sheet it will refresh what's happening in the window there okay so if you don't if you don't refresh I just deleted that key if I hit control C and then control V notice how it, it looks like nothing's happened but it actually has all you have to do is just click on that cell and it will refresh okay so now what we've got is we've got the ball squashing on the ground don't worry if it looks perfect we can go back in and we can change that later on and then it's stretching back up now on frame 11 go to frame 11 and just elevate him off the ground just a little bit okay in this case about 0.5 of a unit um, I think that I'm animating in feet let's just have a look I'll just my general preferences or just come under yeah so um, in the interface here I'm animating in feet so 0.5 really means that I'm and uh, it's lifted 0.5 of a foot off the ground with for some of you just double check this you could actually be in inches um, for this exercise I'm in feet okay and the last thing that we're going to do is I'm going to make this a perfect cycle so I'm going to go back to the first frame I'm going to copy the first frame and then I'm going to paste it onto the last frame onto frame 18 now at the moment, oh, you can see there that we've got to go back in and we've got to fix the scales. Looks like the scales, yep, this one here, we've got this massive overshoot. So what we can do is we can just turn that to linear. Oops, sorry, I have to go back and select that. And then there we go, nice and linear. Okay, fantastic. Now. If I just play this, if you just come down to the timeline here and hit the play button, you can see that, yeah, it's, it's looking all right, but it's not, not great. Okay, now the reason for that is because of the timing, the way that the ball is actually falling. Um, so let's select the, uh, the Y trans. And what we need to do is we need to add a little bit of slow in and slow out or ease in and ease out. That's basically acceleration and deceleration. In this case, what we want to have happen is we want the ball to feel like it's got a little bit of hang time at the top of its bounce and over here I'm just going to add another little bit uh, just I'm ramping this uh, this curve um, and then down here we want this to feel like it's a, it's accelerating so we I'm going to just add another key at frame 8 and then I'm going to do the same thing at frame 12 okay bounce this one here I'm just going to lift that up so it's not um, penetrating the ground plane okay and then I'm just gonna hit play let's just see yeah that's looking a lot better so I've added some um, ease in or sorry some ease out it's easing out of this first key and then you can see here that it's actually coming down into this uh, this key here quite quickly and this is all um, about spacing and spacing is the amount of space or the amount of distance that our character in this case the ball has moved from one frame to the next and so you can see here that at the top of its bounce we're not moving that far between each frame but then just before it's about to make contact with the ground it's moving quite a large distance comparatively to when it's at 
the top of its uh, the top of its arc. These are called um, ease in and ease out. Okay. Now the other thing that I'm noticing is that the stretch and squash is probably just a little bit too big. I'm just going to select the ball again, and I'm just going to minimize the amount of side squash, the X scale. Just take some of that out, um, and let's have a look, and maybe just a little bit of this, and this one here, and this one here. So I can manipulate the side scale through using the uh, parameters tab, or I can do it in the graph editor visually just by playing around with those tabs there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a little bit of ease out and ease in for these scales as well, just so that it's not so linear. You, you realize, you know, remember before we turned them to linear just so that we didn't have that overshoot. Well, this time we can select these and maybe just turn them back to splinal. Oops, that one's no good. We'll just make it a little bit like that so that it's got a nice little shape. And there we have our bouncing ball. So the next thing that we can do is we're going to render this guy out. So I'm going to come up here into the Animation tab and under Make Movies, open up the Make Movies. I'm going to make sure that this is uh, from 1 to 18. I'm just going to animate, uh, sorry, render out an AVI file. You can render out image files or uh, flash um, file if you want to, but in this case an AVI file is fine. I'm going to render it out as preview. Preview means what we see in this window here. You could animate it out as a, a sketch, which might um, which is something that we'll talk about later, or Firefly, which is um, Pose's rendering system. Um, but we're just going to render it out um, in preview. I'm going to leave anti-alias on. And with this one, I'm just going to render this out as, you can render this out at full. And what that means is that it's just going to render it out um, by the predetermined um, values here, 640 by 480. Um, but if you wanted to, you could render this out at preview size, which means this is the preview size, this window that we have here. I'm going to render it out at preview size. Um, and then we just hit Make Movie. Now in this case, I'm going to call this Green Ball. And then you just hit OK. Then here, I'm going to make this a uh, full frame uncompressed. That just means that you know it's not going to compress it at all. Um, and that will give us the very best quality renders. Um, but if you wanted to, whenever you're doing tests, you don't need to render it at that resolution. You could just render it out um, by the default setting there. You can see here that it, it doesn't take too much time. Depending on how much stuff you have in your, your scene, it could take a long time. Okay. Now, I know that um, with this uh, recording system, I have to open this up in QuickTime for you to be able to see it. But let's have a look. I'll just loop this. And there is our bouncing ball, nicely rendered. So I hope that was useful. And um, please, if you have any comments or any questions about that exercise, if there wasn't anything that you were sure about, please let me know and um, I'll email you back. Um, but until next time, happy animating, guys, and we'll talk to you soon.